stepping into the shoes of, of Jeff Thompson isn't an easy thing to do. Um, I think this morning was extremely powerful. I think, you know, words like warrior being used in our sector, I think, is is a very welcomed thing. Um, sometimes we we drift along and we know what we do and we know the power of what we do. But there is a fight to be fought. I think that was that was the statement that Jeff made, and, and that's quite true. Um, what we need sometimes is, is the tools and the tables to be at to be able to fight that fight. And, and hopefully, the presentation that I'll, I'll give now will give some insight into how we've got to where we've got to, um, which um, hopefully shows how sport and leisure can be put on the map um, through, through fighting, as, as Jeff explained. Um, we had a vision in, in Carmarthenshire, and it's not going to be too dissimilar to the vision of the people who are sitting in the room today. We know that we've got some problems, and we know that we've got some opportunities. So what we were looking at, and are still looking at, is we want to create a Carmarthenshire where uh, people are active and healthy. And that's 100% of people. Uh, questions have come through this morning, whether they're linked to disability and, and whether it's linked to female participation, um, level in the playing field. 100% of people really is who we want to affect, and I'm sure that everybody in the room would say the same thing. However, we're starting to look at solutions, and a couple of years ago, um, in particular, we thought, well, we need to go from where we are to where we want to be, and 100% is a long way away. So we started to look at where we were. Um, in the portfolio that I manage, we've got seven facilities threaded throughout the county, um, and working with the likes of Ed, who will come up later and, and put some more uh, flesh to the bone with this, we can analyse our data in such a way that we know how much of the population we're affecting now. In those seven facilities, we're getting roughly 9% of the population in Carmarthenshire to regularly participate. 1.6 million attendances, but um, those who are coming regularly, we're talking about 16,500 people, um, great, so we've got those, that's about 9% of the population. It's a long way from 100%. If we look at our community programmes, we've got a team out in the community, largely funded by Sport Wales. Um, they're engaging uh, with about 275,000 attendances per year. So that's a bit of a situational analysis of the impact we're making, if you look at it in this way. What's the impact of it? We know that about 35% of adults in Carmarthenshire are getting active three times a week or more. And that's a, a decent statistic, particularly when Wales wide, that's 32, so we're ahead of the, the average. So that's one way to look at it. And young people are 48% of them are three times uh, active three times or more per week. So we're trying to establish a bit of a starting point and trying to say, well, how do we get to 100%? So we take those statistics and we say, right, okay, we've got the seven facilities, 16,500 regularly active, that's 9%-ish. So one option that we could look at is and the mathematicians in the room might be with me at the, on this point, if we want to get from 9%, the seven facilities, to 100%, we're going to need to multiply our facilities by about 11. So we either, instead of having seven facilities, we go up to 78 facilities, that'll do it, that'll get us 100%, or we could make the current seven facilities 11 times bigger, that'll do it. So that's one option. And you can imagine the capital cost of doing that, and you can imagine the revenue cost of running those facilities on a regular basis. So that's one option. The other thing that we could look at is the community team, 275,000 attendances. Okay, we've got 185,000, uh, population in Carmarthenshire. So if I was to work that through, and again, mathematicians, I did this on the phone last night. So I would need to have something like 29 million attendances um, if I was to get 186,000 people doing three activities every week over a year. Um, that would require me to make the team that I've got 106 times bigger. Um, and we know in this day and age that that's going to be a struggle as well. So it's a bit of a head-scratching moment. Really. I'm thinking, I've got two options there, which one do I take? Eureka moment. Go back to the stats I said just now. That's maybe not quite the multiplication um, formula that I need to use because 35% of adults are sufficiently active, if we call it that. So maybe the problem isn't as bad as we thought. And 48% of children uh, or young people are sufficiently active, so maybe the problem isn't as bad as we thought. So we've only got to multiply what we've got by three, maybe, because if I was to do that, then I will then get 105% adults active, and I'll get 144% of children active. So I'm starting to find my solutions. And for those of you in the room who are still with me, hopefully you will <laughs> realize that actually all of that is absolutely insane. 
Um, because if we just do what we're doing more times in a bigger way, it's not going to solve the problem. And really, that's the model Jeff was referring to, is that I could carry on in my sort of one lane of the motorway. Uh, it's not going to get us there. Um, it's not going to just simply multiply up. But I think there are some of us, myself included, if I look back, in that way of thinking that if we just do the same thing more times, it's going to work, and it's not. Um, so, how can we get to the point where we're starting to uh, play the part in the bigger picture, and maybe therein we'll find um, some better solutions? Maybe we just need to look a bit wider, think a bit wider. <laughs> Apologies at this point. When I put this GIF into the presentation, I didn't realise it would keep doing that. <laughs> so, I thought it would do it and then stop, but I don't, I don't think it does. Um, so, if I, can, if I can hold your focus, maybe. Um, so, the vision needs to widen. Um, we've got lots of problems, and it's great sitting, sitting at the back earlier and, and seeing the things that, that the guys, Hugh and, and Brett and Jeff, were talking about. We've all got the same problems. We all talk about, oh, it's Wales. Yeah, but Carmarthenshire is different to Swansea. It's different to Neath Patal, but it's different to Pembrokeshire. So it's not really. Um, there's lots of reasons why we say it's different, uh, but actually we've got the same problems. If you all sat in, in, in your own little space, you'd write the same list, I would say. You'd write the list that's got in there, our obesity issues. Um, and we know there are projections around that we're going to be in a much play, worse place in a couple of years' time. Uh, we know we've got an ageing population that may vary a little bit, local authority by local authority or county by county. However, we've generally got an ageing population. That's going to throw up different issues and opportunities for us. Mental health is becoming a, a, a bigger issue um, by hour, by day. Um, it can take extreme cases that end in, in suicide, but bring it all the way back to all of the other lower level and, and, and medium level mental health issues that we're trying to, to tackle as a society. And if one in four-ish is suffering from mental health issues, then obviously that's a huge issue for us, but opportunity for us as well when we think about physical activity and the benefits that that can bring. Um, Clearly which was so ably uh, pronounced by Jeff, but we won't hold it, hold it against him for that one. Um, it has got particular issues, and, and people in the room will know you've got areas of deprivation yourself, and all of the statistics above and that were talked about earlier become much, much worse. They become amplified in areas of deprivation, uh, unfortunately. So just to take one example of the children living in poverty and the path that they are, are likely to go on, um, in the area of Clannacli, 34% of children live in poverty compared to 24% as a Wales average. So in the Clannacli area that we're looking at, it's 10% higher um, uh, children living in poverty. Results, we've got twice as much of the crime happening in the area than should be. If you look at the proportional spread, 5% uh, of the population live there, but 10% of the crime happens there. Um, and... Let's get to the serious stuff, as, as, as Jeff is so good at doing. People are dying earlier. You live there, you have those circumstances and the environmental factor and wider determinants of, of, of health, you will die sooner, as the stats say. Um, and that's not something I'm sure that any of us are, are comfortable, comfortable with. So back to the insanity. If we continue to do what we've always done, we're just going to be an ingredient. We're just going to get further and further away from, from solutions. Um, the good thing, and it's been alluded to, the good thing is that we are being driven together to talk a common language. That common language is the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act. Um, it's fairly new, 2015, and then it takes till 2016, 2017 to start filtering its way out and people to start to PSBs, etc. Um, but we have to start talking this language. Um, I am going to outline uh, in a few minutes really how I think we in the sport and leisure sector in Carmarthen should are a beneficiary of that because I could have stuck in the lane of, you know, I want to build a leisure centre. We have £16.5 million pound in the capital programme to build a new leisure centre. I could have stuck with that. Um, but in speaking this language, it's 16 and a half million to 200 million with lots of people being able to collaborate and co-create something that's going to have the best outcomes for people. Um, we have to embrace that. So a point to note is if you're not talking this language yet, if you're looking at this, this jigsaw on the screen and you're thinking, yeah, I've seen it somewhere and, and it's that unfamiliar with you, you really need to get familiar with it. Um, it facilitates uh, a widening of vision 
my, my little whatever he was just now, a little monkey or whatever he was, uh, a widening of vision to harness the effort and the power of all. Because you will know that when you look at this jigsaw, you put your remit into certain boxes, and there are other people who've got their remit in those boxes too, and there's crossovers, and that's where the wide division can come from. But it does challenge us to create a positive future, not just a, a positive now. And I think, looking at myself and, and, and others in the room, may, it may resonate with is we've got problems now and we've got to solve them now and we can quite easily get into that reactive way of doing what we do for now but let's think really long term about the differences that we can make to those future generations that are here or, or not quite here yet I've got a baby due, my first baby due on the 7th of August I want my child in Wales to have the best future possible and I know that that's going to take things um, take a lot of things, a lot of collaborative working and a lot of societal change over, over the next um, few years and I'll probably look back and say like Jeff in tw for 26 years I've been trying to um, it's not just a document um, or a concept or a strategy it has to run through everything that you do it's audited, Welsh audit office have come out to us and will come out to you and they'll say well how are you satisfying this and, and how are you embracing the ways of working um, and rightly so because it is a positive thing and for us to get to the to the meat and bones of it i guess this currently forms the basis of the project that i'll tell you a little bit more about now which is the wellness and life sciences village so how did it start how did it come about this didn't happen i would love to say that about two three years ago i stood in a room and i said i have a dream but that's not what happened um, funnily enough, Jeff mentioned earlier Muhammad Ali and Nelson Mandela, the people who have that massive dream that is the epitome and everybody can work through, those people are rare um, and, and some people, like Paul and I went on a leadership course for quite a long, long time um, and we looked then at who are the visionaries and who aren't necessarily strong in vision but that's, we have to fit ourselves together um, and it, we shouldn't be expected to be the ones that have got everything. It's just about bringing something to the table. I know that I've got specific issues around a, a leisure centre that's on its last legs, it's on its knees, the bricks, the roof, the, everything about it is at the end. It's a problem I have to solve. I know that I've got issues in the Tlethi area and I want to solve those issues. So I've got a starting point, so I've got a mini dream, if you like. Maybe it's a, I have a dream type dream. Um, but the key thing is, is me being open really to who else can contribute to a bigger dream of which my dream is part of. Um, and therein started a working group which was looking at that 16 and a half million in an area of Lethley which could be this. But who else could be on that journey with us? Um, we started to grow the table, my table, my, my points really were around the two things that I just mentioned. However, we started talking to the health boards and there was a collaborative project at the time um, called ARCH where Howell Var Health Board, ABMU Health Board and Swans University were already, little did we know, collaborating over what they should do where in terms of health services integration and research. <coughs> oh, come to the table, you are significant partners, come to the table, what can you bring? Um, starting to look at regen and, and economic development who potentially were all tapped into they are absolutely committed to tackling deprivation to creating prosperity and jobs etc um, come to the table we have health social care housing teams who've got significant problems that we know the physical activity agenda helps with um, and then you suddenly start to find out that there's seven million pound in the capital program for a care home OK, well, where are you going to build that care home? Are you particularly fussy? Because I haven't decided where we're going to put the leisure centre yet. We could put those two things together. So then you've gone from 16 and a half to 23 and a half. Um, and so on and so on. And then you're talking about models of care. Or oh, we're doing transformation services in the region. There's X number of million who come to the table. And you start to build that, that table up. FE and HE, Corrie Cigar, Swansea Uni, Trinity University, again... Um, there's a £40 million bid about to go into Westminster. Oh, right. Are you fussy about where you're going to put that? Uh, well, it was going to go in Swansea, but we could put it in Clatley. Oh, come to the table. So all of a sudden, that's £23.5 million has gone to 63 and a half. And it sounds like madness, but it's literally um, how, how it was coming about. And H and Effie, when you're starting to think, well, are we on the same page? Well, we are, because you're creating learners. You're creating people who want work-based learning. Um, so they've got to get out to the sector uh, and they want jobs at the end. 
and actually we could do that together. Um, and then sports clubs, and, and oh, there were no booze then, so I don't know whether they are rugby fans and blues and ospreys and all that sort of stuff. Mergers, and oh, let's not go there. Um, but you've got places like Scarlett who are particularly interested in the physical activity agenda, talking about cryotherapy um, chambers and hydrotherapy pools. Well, actually, we're talking about those things as well. Um, so why not start looking at the map of facilities and Scarlett's and S are in, in, in the same domain. Tourism. Our tourism in Wales and in, in our areas are absolutely committed to getting people to Wales for reasons. Well, we were thinking of having a hotel in the area. Oh, right, come to the table. Physio services. Uh, I've, I've had the five-minute warning from Jeff, so I'll keep this one short. But really, <laughs> how many? Four. Really strange stories that once you start talking to people, um, somebody was extremely successful a few generations ago from Clenetley, went to live in America and made his absolute fortune in America, passed away and then put, put aside a trust fund. And a million pound in, in his trust fund was allocated to creating a hydrotherapy facility in Clenetley, which we didn't know. And for the last 30 years, the Clenetley uh, community had been raising money as well, and they'd raised £300,000 towards hydrotherapy. So all of a sudden, we had £1.3 million from nowhere to build a hydrotherapy pool. We're building a leisure centre. There's potentially a nurse in home. Then we're talking about, well, we want to move the, the school for <coughs> disabled children because it's on its last legs. Oh, move it down, hydrotherapy. So all of a sudden, those things start to, start to make sense because we were open um, to it. And that linked with the city deal and government movements around long-term prosperity. So hopefully that gives a bit of a sense of, around starting off with a vision that maybe you don't deliver on, maybe that you talk about and you collaborate over and you investigate. It brings randomly sometimes, strategically sometimes, those people to the table who can bring various other things. I'm going to skip through this incredibly quickly um, because I'm going to get the, the, the pull, I think. We haven't even got to the village yet. Um, I did say, you start off thinking, how am I going to fill 20 minutes? Then you think, how am I going to get it all into 20 minutes? So looking at this, were we working with those partners to think about the things that would contribute towards um, a globally responsible Wales? Yes, complete efficiency in the building, etc. Um, was culture threaded throughout? Yes, looking at the concept of how the building would work and a street concept with cultural venues and learning and skills development, etc. built in. Um, cohesive communities. This village, as it now is, leisure centre as was, village is plonked in the middle of Machanis, which has a golf course and it's where maybe the Scarlet's management and the players is. One of the most affluent areas of Clenetley. The village is there and then you've got the most deprived areas like Morver and Penavan and Seaside and it's right in the middle. Creating cohesive communities is absolutely critical and it's at the heart of, of, of what is there. For example, there won't be a front and a back of the leisure centre. There'll be various entrances, etc, etc. Uh, a more equal Wales, absolutely, I'm going to flick through these now. Healthier is, is pretty obvious, but it's even making things like catering. Don't just put a cafe in there where you grab a sandwich. Make it a training kitchen. A training kitchen that trains the community on how they can look at nutrition within food. Recipe cards that they can take home and try things that they've learnt. Resilient Wales um, and a prosperous Wales there is estimated to be almost 1,900 jobs at this village alone, and that's going to bring over 450 um, million into the local economy over the next 15 years. So a huge difference being made to a highly deprived um, area. I'll flip through these quickly. If I keep promising, you might not take, uh, pull, pull me away. Um, latent demand. We wanted to make sure that when, when we were putting forward the business case, that we weren't just saying, this facility is going to put £400,000 less burden on us financially, because that's what the estimate says, it's going to be £400,000 more efficient to run. Um, we wanted to engage with the likes of Ed and say, OK, but how much more difference is it going to make to the community? How much social value will it bring? And we asked um, Ed and, and the guys at Full Global and Data Hub to put a figure to that. Now, we currently know that Lackley Leisure Centre generates a social value of £1.4 million through health savings, improved subjective well-being, crime reduction and educational uh, improvement. However, with the guys at Full Global saying, well, you could build this, and if you did, that would actually generate a social value of 2.2 million. These are the ways in which I believe that we need to start talking. We need not to be saying, leisure's got a subsidy of 1.7 million. 
That's just a black hole. You know, we need to say, what do we achieve for that? I know that through the council giving me 1.7 million to run services, I return a social value of 5.8 million. So there ends the argument, really. And the argument around, should we build a little equity leisure centre that looks like that or like that? Well, if it generates 800,000 more value to the community, it's a pretty strong um, argument. This is the village. I won't talk about the village because you can just see the design concepts. Um, that's the sort of start point of it where lots of facilities will be housed. So you'll have business incubation. I'm pointing at the back because it's on the back as well. You'll have business incubation in there. You'll have dry site uh, physical activity. You'll have wet site physical activity. You'll have uh, educational and training room. You'll have conference space. You'll have clinical delivery. No actual operations. No sort of blood and guts and cutting people up, but clinical. Um, you've got the business incubation. Potentially the next prosthetic legs will come from the village. Potentially the next digital solutions will come from Clashley. Um that's the tag. Um, so, so that's the concept in terms of what's being built in the current phase in. And just to expand that out, the longer term vision is to have assisted living on the site. It's to have the wellness hotel, as I explained, on the site. It's to spend the next two or three years delivering phase one. Um, but in the end, it'll look like this. And hence it being called a wellness and life sciences village. It encapsulates a whole range of academia, business, education, health, leisure, working together in the site and in the community. So to get to my, this is just the phase in, to get to my um, take homes, which is the very last slide, um, what I do which is wrong is when, when, when I know I don't have much time, I talk faster instead of less. And I'm, I'm, work, I'm working on that. Um, so, so, my, so you probably haven't understood the word. So my take-homes, which maybe I'll say slowly, would be doing what we've always done is going to get the same results. Widen the vision. There are partners out there. They don't even know you exist. And you don't know they exist, maybe. But we can, we can co-create solutions. To be successful in activating a population, we must connect and co-create. Partners will have audiences that we don't and can't get to. Um, and usually they have access to resources that we can't, can't get to also. Embrace the well-being goals, I can't stress that enough, and the ways of working. Um, they, you could read that a different way. Embrace the well-being goals and wow, they really do get us talking uh, the same language, but wow, of course, is ways of working. So I was going to finish this presentation and, and last night I was sort of you know, going to put in, so the sky's the limit, guys. But actually, as I was looking for a visual, like that one, sky's the limit, I noticed that there were other visuals, but actually the sky's not the limit. How is the sky the limit when there are footprints on the moon? And then I started thinking, well, actually, there are no limits. So if you've taken anything from today, think big or work with people who think big and nothing, uh, the, the phrase that was used earlier is about making the impossible happen and you truly can do it by co-creating. Thank you.